Francis. I was born next door here where Jim and his family live now on February 25th, 1908. My mother died of complications. My mother's yeah. sisters and my grandparents raised me. And I had lots of attention. I had such a hard time finding food that would agree with you. They tried everything they could and finally found that melons food, which was the new baby product in those days, when he was uh, first born, of course, the food was the problem. In the night, you never had your stove going and to heat baby bottles was a new thing around there. And so they uh, bought a, the first electric iron in Springville. Now it was never used to iron with, but they would turn it upside down and set it in a pan or something to eat, heat that milk in the middle of the night. When he was six months old, he was the same weight that he was when he was born. But he put on made up for it when he got a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> but his aunts, there were six doting aunties. Of course, they didn't, all of them live home. I guess all but one. Your mother and Aunt Margaret were the ones that were married. And the others were still at home and in school or going to school. But uh, he always said that uh, Brigham Young had the most wives, but he had the most mothers. But they always Mommy, adored him. And I, you, I said he was. And Beulah, his stepmother, said that if anybody could have been spoiled, he would have done, would have been, because he had all the attention in the world. But she always praised him because he was never a spoiled kid. And she always had a birthday for you, didn't she? Every, this Tradition. was uh, Harold's father's second wife. And she was a very dear, sweet person. She always treated him just like he was one of her own, although he never did live with her. But, uh, she always had a birthday for him and invited the Johnson family to come and enjoy this birthday with him. And uh, she was right up till the end of her life, treated Harold just as if he were one of her own. She'd come to him for counsel or just the same as she would have her own son. So she was, she and uh, Harold's dad were married about four years after his mother's death. <coughs> My stepmother, Aunt Beulah, always kept a picture of my mother in the home until dad died. And in her living room, it was kept right in the living room. She did everything she could to uh, keep that memory alive. The only time in my life that I ever stayed with them in their home was when I had my appendix out in Salt Lake. They brought me there to recuperate until I was well enough to come back down to my grandparents' home. His dad always hesitated taking him away from his grandmother because she had, of course, raised him and uh, depended on him. <laughs> that had been given to his mother and father when they were married and took care of them. And uh, then after we were married and got settled in our home here. <coughs> she gave us part of those dishes. I have 
different ones of them up here. Uh, I'd show you some of them. The picture up on the top is one of them. This one is an oyster cracker uh, container. They used to have oyster suppers and that was so popular in the early years. Couples that would get together and have an oyster supper and somebody would bring a cake and that was their party. Of course they'd play cards and different games. But uh, these two pieces were made in Prussia and are at this time are very valuable. Different things that she gave and saved for us but uh, of all gracious, lovely stepmother, she was surely one of them. For standing by my father's side as he passed away, and it was obvious what was happening, she turned to me and she said, Now he'll be with your mother. She was a most generous, <coughs> beautiful person. I think no person ever <coughs> did more for her friends than Aunt Beulah did.